morning. Good morning. In worship, as in all of life, Christ offers to us healing and wholeness. Welcome to the worship of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. Thank you for worshiping with us today. I am Reverend Becky Sweet, and I am delighted to be the senior pastor here and our worship leadership, for whom we are very grateful, includes our ushers and hospitality ministers, Matthew Slattery, our liturgist for today, Michael Kulata, our camera operator, David Kingsley, our technical director, Molly McMillan, our pianist, Wendy Kimball Dugan, our song leader, Kira D'Alavera, did I get it right? Awesome, is providing some beautiful special music for us today. Maud Rith is our church administrative assistant and communications coordinator. Jamie Breedlove Crouch is our prayer leader as well as our loving care ministries coordinator. Reverend Pam Carey will join me in offering healing prayers and the rest of the staff are listed in your bulletin. I extend a warm welcome to all those who are visiting with us today, both on site and online, as well as to those who worship with us regularly. If you are visiting on site and have received a Connect card, or if you would like to get one, um, please ask one of our hospitality ministers and complete that so that I may send you a note of thanks for your time worshiping with us today. If you are worshiping via Facebook Live, please scroll down and leave a comment there. And if you are worshiping via our web page and live streaming, please scroll down on that page and complete the virtual friendship pad. Also scrolling down there, you will find the link for our bulletin and our hymns for today so that you may worship with us fully. Please note in the bulletin, our COVID protocols are listed just in case you have any questions. The additional candle on the center of the altar reminds us to pray daily for the people of Ukraine and the surrounding countries as we seek peace all throughout the world. Also, please pray for those who are offering hospitality to the refugees from all around the world, even in our own region. Today is the sixth Sunday after Pentecost, and we continue with our summer worship series, Discipleship by the Sea. On the Sundays of July and August, we will encounter Jesus, the man, the prophet, the teacher, the healer, and the troublemaker as presented through Mark's gospel. We will journey with Jesus along the shoreline and in boats as we seek to be the disciples that Jesus has called us to be. Today's focus is heal. As we meet Jesus in the midst of his ministry of healing, the ministry is extended to us. May we seek wholeness as we worship God together. And as we continue to worship, let's take the opportunity to greet one another with signs of the peace and love of Christ. You may stand if you are comfortable doing so and share a holy wave or a sign from my heart to yours. Let's greet one another. And you may turn and face the cameras in the back of the sanctuary and offer signs of peace and love to those who are worshiping with us from afar. And you may be seated as Molly and Kira offer to us our centering music.
Would you please rise as you are comfortable doing so for the call to worship? Healing God, we come together in our brokenness to call to you in your mercy to make us whole again. Restoring God, we gather to worship you even as we hopefully seek to be renewed and restored again. Foundational God, we come to praise and thank you. In the depths of your holy being, we find peace and rest. Amen. May we sing together, There is a Balm in Gilead, in the United Methodist Hymnal on page 375. be seated. The reading today is from the book of Mark, chapter 3, verses 7 through 12. Jesus departed with his disciples to the sea and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, hearing all that he was doing. They came to him in great numbers from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, beyond the Jordan, and the region around Tyre and Sidon. He told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, so that they would not crush him, for he had cured many, so that all who had diseases pressed upon him to touch him. Whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they fell down before him and shouted, 
you are the Son of God. But he sternly ordered them not to make him known. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Good morning, Henry, again. Where would you like to sit today? Right there? Okay. I will give it a try. All right. I brought a couple things with me today. What do I have? That's right. These are Band-Aids. These are extra long, extra large, strong strips, aren't they? They're for big boo-boos. All right, and what do I have here? Nope, these aren't Band-Aids. This is antibiotic cream. So if I have a cut on my leg, I would want to wash it off first, right? And then put the cream on, and then put the Band-Aid on, and then try to keep it clean while it heals, right? Yeah, yeah. So we don't have just one thing that we use usually when we want something to heal, right? We sometimes will use the cream and the Band-Aids, but there are other things that we use when we want to heal too. Do you know what those are? Something sort of? Yeah, we use a lot of different things actually. Sometimes if we're sick enough, we might have to go to the doctors and the doctor would help us to heal. But we always, always, even if it's just a little paper cut on my thumb, we always have the option of praying, don't we? And asking God to help heal us. We should have a sign inside the first aid kit that says, stop, remember to pray too, right? Because sometimes we forget that. Sometimes we do. When I have a bad headache, or if my heart is hurting, or if someone else I know is hurting, I don't want to forget to pray and ask Jesus to help heal. Do you know there are places in the Bible where they call Jesus the great physician? No, I don't, sort of. Yeah, they do. And physician is another word for doctor okay. because Jesus can help bring healing. So I want to remind us today to remember to pray for healing, for the things that seem small and things that seem great big, anything. We can always take it to Jesus and pray about it, okay? Do you have anything that you would like to take to Jesus today to pray about? You're not sure? You know, before the service started, when you first came in, you showed me a hole in your mouth. <laughs> Henry lost his first tooth. Yay! <laughs> That's exciting. But that also means that you have a spot there that needs some healing. And the new tooth is going to come in, right? So how about if we pray for your mouth? Would that be okay? <laughs> you are so darn cute. <laughs> All right, so let's pray together, and everyone can help us. Thank you, God, for caring for us so very much that you want to heal us. Help us to remember to come to you with items big and small for healing and relief. Today I ask you to heal Henry's mouth. And help Henry to know he is precious to you too. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up today, Henry.
Would you please pray with me? In the silence and in the clamor, O oh God, we pray we would listen for you because we know you are listening to us. May your word become evident as it is read and proclaimed and sung and shared in so many ways this day. Amen. For my children and me, going annually to the great New York State Fair is a wonderful tradition, one that we look forward to all year long. And one of the curiosities that we need to satisfy each year is going to the Center of Progress building in order to see what new products the vendors will be selling and the new ways they have found to try to sell those products. One year, a salesperson was demonstrating unbreakable combs a comb like this, the kind you comb your hair with, unbreakable combs. As these professional salespersons demonstrated, they tried to hook the passers-by into stopping to listen to what they had to say. He tried to impress those who were listening and watching by putting the comb through all kinds of torture and stress. Finally, to impress the skeptics in the crowd, he bent the comb completely in half and it snapped with a crack. Without missing a beat, he bravely held up both halves of the unbreakable comb for everyone to see and said, and this, ladies and gentlemen, is what an unbreakable comb looks like on the inside. <laughs> Most of us, at one point or another, usually in our younger years, considers ourselves to be unbreakable. Hmm, will you admit that? We thought of ourselves as invincible, too tough to conquer, indestructible, shatterproof, unbeatable. I'm not sure if that typically hits in the teenage years or shortly before or after, but it hits us at one time or another where we think nothing will ever harm us. But then perhaps there is a diagnosis a cherished friend is lost. There's an accident, a failure, a perfect relationship is broken. There's a poor decision or a betrayal, misplaced values or unmet expectations. We all hold that in common too. Yes, there's always a major life's crisis and I don't know of many people who can say that they've never cracked under the pressure. Jesus knew something about brokenness and stress. 
even early in his ministry. As we pick up Mark's account of Jesus' ministry, still only in the third chapter, we already find that Jesus needed to call students and invite believers to live in a new way. He needed to prove his authority to them. He performed miracles, including healings, in order to show them that he truly was and is the Son of God. Jesus' family thought that he had lost his mind. They tried to convince him to go home rather than to admit in public that he's the Son of God. He already had the religious leaders plotting about how to get rid of him. He was causing too much trouble. He was breaking the rules, and he was undermining the control of religious dogma. The Pharisees thought he was a phony, a lawbreaker, perhaps even the devil on earth. And yet, Jesus had become so popular because of his miracle-working power that unmanageable crowds followed him and as he made a journey through the towns and villages along the shore of the sea. So why does Jesus continue this ministry of healing and working miracles? In the Gospel of John, it states that Jesus continued so that the people would believe and live. Both Mark and John state that Jesus needs to give evidence that he has authority to forgive sins. But above all else, all of the gospel writers convey that Jesus cared about the people. He had compassion for them and thus healed the sick and the diseased, the marginalized and spiritually broken. There is no set criteria or method for Jesus' healings. You might notice if you think about his miracles of healing, some involved touch. Jesus touched those to be healed, or sometimes they reached out to touch Jesus or even just the hem of his cloak. Some were just instructed to follow the ritual for cleanliness by presenting themselves in the temple. Some were not even present when they were healed. Others received mud packs made of spit and soil. Sometimes Jesus credited a person's faith for their healing, and sometimes he credited the faith of others. Sometimes there's no mention of faith at all. The intention of the conveyance of Jesus' healing power was just to heal and forgive. Heal and forgive. Jesus healed folks of mental, physical, spiritual, and relational brokenness and brought restoration. What needed to be restored? Anything that was broken, anything, anything that was broken was of concern to Jesus. A disease or infirmity, lack of faith or guilt over one's behavior. It could be greed, stinginess, attitudes, long-held biases, self-esteem, broken hearts. Even today, we are encouraged to come to Jesus and Jesus' servants to receive healing. Jesus has the authority and the capacity to heal any brokenness. We may not be immediately aware of Jesus' healing power touching our lives, for that healing may come in a way other than what we expect. Hmm. But when we look back at a time of brokenness, we can often see how divine intervention helped us to learn and grow, to move on and live, and once again, know joy and fulfillment. 
and every disciple of Christ is then called to be an instrument of healing for others in the name of Christ. We are all ministers after all. Isn't that what the scriptures tell us? And healing is one of the identified spiritual gifts we are called to utilize for the common good. In his classic transformational book, The Wounded Healer, Henry Nouwen reminds us that we don't have to wait until all of our wounds are completely healed before we can use what we have experienced to help others. We don't have to wait until we're completely healed. We don't have to wait until we are perfect. We do not have to wait until we have accomplished all of our goals. Jesus can still use us and what we have experienced and learned to help heal others. We don't have to wait to get the doctor's release before we start showing compassion for another. Christ calls us to care for and be instruments of healing for others while our wounds are still in various stages of healing and while our scars are still visible. We are all fellow travelers on the journey toward wholeness. Don't wait to allow God to use you to bring healing to another. There is no denying that attending to another with similar wounds may reopen some of our own. It just happens that way. And when that happens, we have the opportunity to heal more deeply. God uses us in and through our woundedness and weakness, just as the scripture reminds us. We cannot begin to know all of what is going on in the life of another, in the life of anyone around us. Some days it's challenging to know some of what's going on in our own lives, let alone those of another. But we do know that we're all standing in the need of prayer, as the gospel song puts it. We all have places of brokenness, confusion, loss, pain, suffering, lostness, disappointment, discouragement, despair. We know still that what God desires for us is to live life with peace and fulfillment and joy in abundance. I do not think that it would be appropriate for us to worship today using the focus of healing without providing a conduit of Christ's healing to touch those seeking restoration. After we sing the cares chorus, we will expand our worship into a healing service in which each one will have options for participation. Let's all consider the brokenness for which we seek divine healing today, or perhaps the brokenness of someone that we care about. Think of the divine protection that Jesus desires to give us this day. Jesus knows what a broken human being looks like on the inside and desires to restore each of us and all of us to our created beauty. You may remain seated as we sing the Cares Chorus. It's a very short little chorus in the Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2215, and we will sing it through four times.
book of James, we hear these words. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. O Christ, our healer, as in times past, not all the sick and suffering found their way to your side, but had to have their hands taken, their bodies carried, or their names mentioned. So together, we, confident of your goodness, bring others to you. Bill and Robert Deming, David Hall, Howard Longhouse, Pastor John and Martha McNeil, Joyce Turner, Mary Boardman and her son Matthew, Marion Vandeveld, Michael Russell, Paul Sweet, Sheila Hall, and Sherman Macarath. Our hearts go out to Alice Hamlin and family for the recent loss of her cousin, Mark McDermott. And others whose troubles we do not know, or whose names we would not say aloud, we mention them now in silence that you understand. And for us whose burdens we know, brokenness we feel, and hurt that needs your touch, we pray. O oh God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer on your beloved children who need your care, let your love, healing, and support be known in the care of healthy human relationships. Savior, say the word, touch us with your love, and we shall be healed. Amen. Would you please pray with me? O oh God, the giver of health and salvation, we give thanks to you for the gift of oil. As your holy apostles anointed many who were sick and healed them, so pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on this gift that those who in faith and repentance receive this anointing may be made whole through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I invite Reverend Pam Carey to come forward and join me, and we will have two stations where you may come forward and receive an anointing of oil and prayers for healing for yourself or others. You may make a specific request if you want to or just receive a prayer for healing. And while you are in your seats, you may offer prayers for one another, for our community, and for our world until all have completed coming forward as so desired.
Let's unite our hearts together in prayer once again. Almighty God, we pray that our siblings may be comforted in their suffering and made whole. When they are afraid, give them courage. When they feel weak, grant them your strength. When they are afflicted, afford them patience. When they are lost, offer them hope. When they are alone, move us to their side. When death comes, open your arms to receive them, we pray. Continue to heal us also, that we may be instruments of your power to make all things new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please also note If any would like to have a more in-depth conversation about a spiritual concern that you may have or a struggle that you may be engaged in, please feel free to contact me. We are created and blessed to be in community. None of us need to make this journey alone. When we make our offerings, it is often an expression of the immense gratitude we hold in our hearts for God's love and healing in our lives. We may never be able to adequately convey the depth of our thanks, but we continue to try to do so through the sharing of our gifts and resources that we may offer at this and other times. You may make your offering to God through the church by using the donate link on the church website or by mailing your offering to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. For those who are worshiping here on site, our ushers will be delighted to receive your gifts as the offering plates are passed and as we are continually blessed with Molly's musical offering.
Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers and restoring our strength. Thank you for drawing us apart from our selfish ways and self-serving pursuits. Let our offering today fulfill your purposes, not ours. Let these gifts summon others to follow Christ. Let all know the joy of communing with the great physician who offers healing to all who dare to trust your mercy. Amen. Please join in singing verses 3 through 5 of We Would See Jesus on page 256. May be seated. Please read all of the announcements in the bulletins and in our weekly emails so that you may be aware of the opportunities to engage in mission and ministry through St. Paul's Church. Following the worship service, our fellowship and coffee hour time will be held outside on the sidewalk outside the Aurora Street doors. You are welcome to join us for refreshment there. Reverend Pam Carey will once again be offering the study, The Way of Prayer, on Wednesday afternoons at 2 o'clock beginning on July 27th and running through September. This is a small group experience in spiritual formation, which includes daily readings and exercises and weekly gatherings. If you are interested in participating, please contact Pam at the email address that is in the bulletin, and that is really important so we make sure we have enough books ordered for everyone's participation. Take me out to the ball game. Please let me know by Tuesday if you would like to go with us to the Syracuse Mets and Omaha Storm Chasers baseball game at NBT Stadium on Thursday, July 28th. The game starts at 6.35, but I understand if you would like to join with other United Methodists there in singing the national anthem, you should arrive sometime around 6-ish. We have wonderful seats in the 200 section of the third baseline, and it's dollar concession night, so the details are in your bulletin if you would like to join a group from St. Paul's and from United Methodist Churches all around the region. We would be glad to have you come there. And I understand there's a little bit of carpooling going on, so if you need some help arranging for that, you may let me know. Now, would you receive this dismissal with blessing? May God, who heals all our iniquity, bless and keep you.
May the face of our Savior, who heals all of our afflictions, shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the lights and countenance of the Holy One, who redeems your life, be lifted upon you and give you peace. Amen.